festivals are critical to the self-distribution model for African American films and for any any film. I think people that are doing the whole do-it-yourself thing don't really think about what the festivals can do for you. To think of the festivals as promotional tools tools for your theatrical release. I'm um, being very selective about the press that we do because if you blow out your press at a festival, then when you come back to actually open the movie, well, we already saw it there. Um, so there's really strategy to work with the festivals, but it, it is a great kind of buzz launching pad in the market. If you think of it not so much as I'm going to go to the festival and try to get bought as opposed to I'm going to go to the festival and start my promotional campaign for my release. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Those boys have been around so long. They got generations of fans. I'm first generation. Mm, clearly. <laughs> I'm what would be termed an OG. I will follow is um, a story about a sister who's grieving and uh, she's having a bad day and it's about 12 visitors who come to her home on that day and help her get to where she needs to be. Very quiet film, very small film. We always intended to shoot it very simply um, and just to tell the story with a lot of heart. It's not edgy, it's not avant-garde, it's very straightforward. Um, it takes place all in one location. And, um, you know, it's got some, some good actors in it. We were passionate and we tried to put it together. I didn't go to film school. My film school was really being on the sets and being around all of these amazing filmmakers. I mean, to have proximities to such great filmmaking talent. I started out as a film marketer, helping other people get their films out there. I have a small PR firm in Los Angeles that deals with select films for studios and television networks. So I've been fortunate to publicize and market films for Spielberg, Clint Eastwood, Michael Mann, Bill Condon. And um, over the last five years, I've transitioned into making my own films. It was just really being so close to film and working so diligently with film every day as a marketer, uh, thinking about film, analyzing film, trying to retell the story and repackage the story to folks. It just, you know, seemed like uh, a really powerful way to get your voice heard, and I wanted them. I wanted one. <laughs> I think the, one of the most common mistakes that independent filmmakers make is feeling like your picture is finished when you lock picture. You focus on actors, cinematography, the writing, people spend 10 years on a screenplay, they, it's a labor of love, they get the financing, they lock picture, they finish it, and then they expect to hand it off to someone. And as independent filmmakers in 2010, that's not where it ends. You need to be able to market and understand the distribution of your film. Until you are in a theater with butts and seats, until you have people playing your DVD, watching it on VOD, it's on basic cable, it's on premium cable, until you have exploited all the rights of your picture, you're not finished. And it's astonishing to me that people finish their film and walk away. Um, in this day and age, especially as filmmakers of color, we can't do that. Easy. Good life was like an escape. A release. It was like home. Something like that couldn't happen in any other city, in any other part of the world. At any other time, it was perfect. This is the Life Was a Little documentary that I did. I uh, made it for $2.40. Uh, it was easy to make my profit back. Um, but I made it for very little money, and uh, less than $50,000, and uh, decided that I wanted to self-distribute as opposed to give the rights away. We had a couple offers that were nice. That were nice. It would have completely made me whole and given me a little money to play with. But I really had an idea about owning the film and keeping ownership of it. And it was a good amount of money that I thought, let me just experiment with marketing it and distributing it myself. So I researched, I did the hard work, I basically four-walled it. Um, so we had an opening on the East Coast, on the West Coast, so you were able to see it in theaters. The, having a theatrical release helped me make better deals at cable. Uh, so I made a deal with Showtime. Um, I got a better deal on that because I did have a theatrical release. So I did a premium cable deal. I, um, I decided to keep my DVD rights because I felt like my documentary is about underground LA hip hop. It's a specialty 
and no one's gonna know how to market that except someone who's like into that, like me. Uh, so giving it to some DVD company who's just gonna call it a hip hop movie, like they weren't really gonna mind the artists and what the movie was about. So we kept the DVD rights, um, and I just did license deals with uh, different online distributors for it. Um, I did uh, deals with actual brick and mortar retailers, uh, labels, um, all the artists in the film, I sold wholesale to their labels. Whenever those artists go on tour, they buy wholesale from me. Um, our international sales are insane because, you know, hip-hop is better, bigger everywhere than here. Um, and so the DVD sales for it continue to be brisk. I mean, just at Urban World this weekend, uh, I think we had something like 19 sales yesterday. This is two years after the film. Germany, Russia, Japan, all 19 sales were from. We were like, where are these coming from all of a sudden? Um, and 19 sales doesn't sound like a lot, but when you make the DVD for 75 cents and you sell it for 19.99, that's a good day for an independent filmmaker, you know? So I think that those are the things that we have to think about and to have those kind of sales every day for two years way exceeds anything that any DVD company would have given me. I just think that there are new ways to think about the distribution of your film. I don't think the goal should be trying to get dis dis distribution. The goal should be, what is the best thing for my picture? And more often than not, the best thing for your picture is to not sell your rights in perpetuity to someone else. Some of the best thing to do is to analyze, be critical, take on some of the responsibility for yourself and figure out what does my film need to have its best life. And for me, that's trying to keep ownership of my film, trying to split rights, trying to license instead of sell, you know, do, giving uh, rights to companies for a limited amount of time and then you get them back. Um, I think it's a lot about kind of owning our images and taking responsibility for our films all the way up to the end. That's what I'm interested in anyway. I know a lot of our non-black counterparts are doing that very successfully, the whole DIY movement. You know, I mean, that's all they talk about at Tribeca and South, South, South by Southwest. And we should be talking about that in Urban World, at Pan African, at Langston Hughes, at Roxbury. I mean, we have to start talking about how do we not only make the films, but get them out to the people that we're making them for. I'm trying to just make films, get them out there, make films, get them out there. And, you know, they're different routes. Hi, I'm Ava DuVernay, and you're watching Real Black.